Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to solve equations with variables on both sides. I wanted to do a quick preview of what we're going to do in the video so you can see the example problems. We're going to be using these steps uh, in all of them, but here are the uh, examples in order that I will be working. So if you would like to jump forward in the video to specific examples that you see that you are having the most trouble with those type of problems or that complexity then just go ahead and do that you don't have to watch the entire video uh, I do recommend you watch the entire video so you're uh, solid on all of these types of problems and the varying levels of difficulty but again if you want to skip directly to them that's fine uh, examples one and two are pretty straightforward three and four we add in distribution here examples five and six are going to be our special cases that we talked about of either infinite uh, slash all real solutions or uh, no solution five and six are special cases. Eight just has a lot of fractions. I'm going to show you how to use your calculator to simplify that a lot and let your calculator do the heavy lifting of the fractions. And then number 12, it just has multiple uh, sets of distribution on one side. Uh, so it's just a little more complicated, but I'll show you how to break that down step by step. Okay, so that's just a preview. And so next we'll get started uh, with the primary part of the video. Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we are going to look at solving equations with variables on both sides. This is targeted for my Algebra 1 students. Uh, we need to follow some basic steps here when we're working on uh, solving these equations. And I have listed those steps that I covered with my students uh, here. And this really applies for, for all equations, but it's especially necessary when we're solving with equations on both sides. Uh, my students uh, did great solving one-step, two-step, multi-step equations. And this year, last year, the previous year, when we get to solving with variables on both sides, that tends to be more difficult. So I think it's important that we uh, create a list of steps and we follow that in the beginning so that we provide a framework uh, to, to be able to do this and once you practice it and you it'll become second nature and you won't have to worry about uh, writing these steps down or anything but in the beginning I think it's important so we are going to utilize these steps and check off these steps uh, as we go alright so let's take a look at this first example here we have example 1 solve 4x minus 6 equals 7x we are actually going to work this in two different ways and that will cover example one and example two. So in example one I'm going to do uh, or use the method that I teach my students uh, to be the best way and it's always easier when we have variables on both sides if we will make sure that we try to keep our variable term positive when we're done. And with this equation it's a, a perfect example to use that so let's start with our steps we have step one distribute do we need to distribute here no we do not so we're we're already done with that do we need to combine or gather like terms on either side no we can't combine 4x minus 6 7x is by itself so that step is done so next is step three we need to get variables on one side and numbers on the other so this is where I have my choice I could subtract 7x here and here or I could subtract 4x here and here and in order to keep my variable term positive the best thing is to subtract 4x from both places subtract 4x okay so when I do that these cancel out and I bring everything else down don't forget the sign negative x equals 7 minus 4 is 3 and put the x on the back okay now I've got it set up the way I need it I have uh, my variables on one side numbers on the other check so now I'm going to solve as usual I'm going to solve as I have been when I was doing one step two step and multi-step equations so I'm going to use opposite operations so right now I have 3x that means 3 times x the opposite of times is to divide so I'm going to divide both sides and these cancel out which is my goal so that I get 1x and we just write that as x because there is an implied one here we get one because 3 divided by 3 is 1 that's why we do this here so that we get a 1 in front of x so we get just 1x 
We write that as just x because there is an implied 1. Okay, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So my answer is negative 2 right here. All right, and on example 2, we're going to use the same problem, but we're going to work it a different way, and I'll show you how. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You're still going to get the right answer, but this example 1, the way we did it here, you will see is a little easier. Okay? All right, so here we have example 2. You'll notice it's the same exact problem as we used in example 1. We have our steps here again so that we can... Uh, utilize those. So let's start with our steps. Step one, distribute. No need to do that here. So that step is done. Combine and gather. No need to do that here. That step's done. Get variables on one side, numbers on the other. Okay. So remember in the first example, we subtracted first uh, 4x from both sides. In this case, I'm going to subtract 7x here. The opposite of this 7x means plus 7x. So the opposite of plus 7x is minus 7x. So I'm going to subtract 7x here. When I do this, I, 7x minus 7x is just 0. So I, I just make that a 0, bring down my equal sign. And then 4x minus 7x, 4 minus 7 is negative 3x on the back there, and then minus 6. Okay, so this is okay. This is okay. I'm still fine here. All right, now I have a, another choice here. I can add the 3x or I can add 6. I'm going to choose to add 3x so that I can keep my variable term positive, which we have talked about. So I'm going to add 3x. The opposite of minus 3x is add 3x. Add 3x. You add 3x to 0, and you, you're just going to get 3x. There's nothing over here on this side, just 0. So I put 3x over here. 3x is the only thing over here. Okay, these will cancel. Three, negative 3x plus 3x is 0. We have negative 6 here, and we have our equal sign. Okay. Now, last step, opposite of 3 times x is to divide by 3. These cancel, leaving us with just x, which is our goal. I need to divide this by 3 as well. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Okay, so you notice that we got the same answer here as we did up here. Same answer. We just did it a different way. So don't be concerned if you don't do this the, the perfect way where you've got a, an, an extra step or so to do. It's okay. You As long as you follow the procedure, you're still going to end with the same answer. And there is more than one route to get there. And I want you to be comfortable with that. All right, let's look at example three. All right, so here we have example three. So we have a little bit more to do here. So we need to follow our steps. Okay, so the first thing is distribute. Do I need to distribute? Yes, I do, right here. So we're going to do that. I want you to draw your arrows so that you do not forget what you're doing. That's plus 4 times 2. That gives me 8. Positive 4 times x gives me plus 4x. Okay, so my distribution is done. Now I just write what's left. Minus 5x equals x plus 12. Okay? So my distribution is done. I've distributed. Now I need to combine and gather on both sides. Nothing to combine and gather over here. Over here I do. I've got these two that I need to put together. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to start with my 8 because it did not change. So I have 8. And then I have plus 4x minus 5x. That gives me minus 1x, which I'm just going to write as minus x. And that equals, bring everything else down, x plus 12. Be organized with what you're doing here. Okay, now I have a choice. I have combined and gathered. Now I need to get variables on one side. I can bring this x, uh, this negative x over here by adding it, or I can bring this positive x over to here by subtracting it. Remember, we want to keep our variable terms positive. That's what we would like to do, just to make things easier. It's not wrong if we don't. We'll still get the right answer, just as we saw in example two. But it's just easier if we keep our variable terms positive. So let's add this x instead of subtracting this one. So we're going to add x here. Remember, we can only put x's with x's and numbers with numbers. I'm not adding x to this 12 over here. I'm not adding a second x. I'm not doing that. I'm only stacking my variable terms here. Okay, negative x plus x goes away just like we want. We're only left with 8 here. And that's going to equal x plus x, 2x, bring down my plus 12. Okay, so that's done. Now I just solve as normal, and I'm going to get my 
uh, I'm, I basically just have a two-step equation here. So I've got plus 12 here. I've got numbers established by themselves over here. So I need to get this plus 12 over to here. I do that with opposite operations. So the opposite of adding 12 is to subtract 12. So I'm going to subtract 12 on both sides here. These go away, which is exactly what I want. I'm only left with 2x over here on the right side. And that equals 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Okay, negative 4 equals 2x. I now have 2 times x. My goal is to get just 1x, get x by itself. So the way I can get this 2 over here to move over here is to do the opposite. So I'm doing multiplying 2 times x. So the opposite of that is to divide. Okay, so I divide on both sides. 2 divided by 2 is just 1, leaving me with 1x, which is the goal. So x equals negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So my answer is negative 2. All right? Okay, a few more steps there, but we follow these steps, and uh, you're, you will be just fine. Okay, next example, example 4. All right, here we have example 4. So we're going to just follow our steps here. Step 1, distribute. All right, do I have anything to distribute? Yes, I do. I have something to distribute here and here. So I need to do that. So 2 times y, I'm drawing my arrows to make sure we do the right thing. And then 2 times negative 3 there. Here, 6 times 7. Here, 6 times negative y. All right, we need to watch our signs here. So 2 times y, 2y. 2 times negative 3, negative 6. And now I'll write what's left. Plus 4 equals, and here, 6 times 7, 42. 6 times negative y, negative 6 y. Okay, so I have distributed, that's done. Now I need to combine and gather like terms. Nothing to gather and combine over here, but I do have like terms here. Negative 6 and 4, they're both constants, they're both numbers, so I can put those together. I'm going to write, start with my 2y, it's not changing, 2y here. Negative 6 plus 4 is minus 2. Negative 6 plus 4 gives me a negative 2. Okay? That equals still 42 minus 6y. That didn't change. Now I have my choice here. Step 2 is done, so I need to get my variables on one side, numbers on the other. So I have a choice. I can subtract 2y from both sides, or I could add 6 to both sides to keep my variable term positive, which is what I prefer to do, because that, in general, makes it easier. I'm going to choose to add 6y to both sides. So I'm adding 6y to both sides. When I do that, this strikes out. Negative 6y plus 6y is 0, so that's gone. That's what we wanted. And it is now moved over here. 2y plus 6y is just 8y. Okay. Now I need to, I've got my numbers established by themselves over here, so I need to get this minus 2 over here. The opposite of subtracting 2 is to add 2. Okay, strike that out. That's just 0, so it goes away. I'm left with only 8y over here. And I have 42 plus 2 over here, which gives me 44. Last step, I have 8 times y. The opposite of multiply is to divide, because I want to get 1y. That's my goal. And 8 divided by 8 is 1. Therefore, I have 1y left over, which is what I want. So I can strike those out. And I'm left with y equals 44 over 8. Okay, that's great. Now, it looks like this will reduce, right? I know that this reduces to 11 over 2, but if I didn't, we're going to use our calculator. If I'm not sure, it's okay to check with our calculator. So, I have a fraction 44 over 8. 44 over 8 as a fraction means 44 divided by 8. I'm going to hit enter here. I get a decimal. I always want to convert back to a fraction when possible. So I do math, enter, enter, and that reduces it for me down to 11 over 2, which is exactly what we got. Okay, nothing wrong with checking ourselves with a calculator. All right, so next let's move on to example 5. All right, here we have example 5. Now I will tell you now that example 5 and example 6 that we will work next are special cases. When we are solving equations with variables on both sides like we have here, we do have the opportunity for two possible special cases. Those special cases occur when our variables cancel out. When our variables cancel out, if what we are left with is true, when what we are left with is true, that means that our answer 
is all real x, all real x's or all real f or all real y, whatever our variable is, all real numbers, which we can also write with a big R like this, it's like an R with two backs, okay? That's if it's true. If what we have left when we're done, when our variables are all canceled out, so our final mathematical statement, if it is false, that means we have no solution, okay? And we're going to talk about what the actually means in just a minute when we figure out uh, which one example five is going to be. Okay, so we're going to follow our steps, same as always. First thing we do is distribute. So we do need to distribute two times f, two times negative three, two times f, two times negative two. Okay, watch your signs. Two times f, two f. Two times negative three, negative six equals two times f, two f. Two times negative two, negative four, and then we still have this minus five. Okay, so our distributing is done. Check that. Combine and gather like terms. Nothing to combine and gather here. We do have some gathering we can do here. We can combine negative four and negative five into negative nine. So we're going to do that. Two f minus nine. Okay equals 2f minus 6. Okay. All right. Now we need to, we've done step two. Now we need to get our variables on one, on the same side. So it doesn't matter here. Uh, I'm going to subtract 2f here, which means I subtract 2f from this f term. Okay. So that goes away. We just have negative 9 here equals, we still have this negative 6. And 2f minus 2f also goes away here. That's still 0, so that's gone. So we have negative 6 equals negative 9. So we have a special case. Our variable terms are gone. Our variable is gone now. So now we evaluate this. Is negative 6 equal to negative 9? Absolutely not. So it is false, and therefore our answer is no solution. Okay, so our answer here would be no solution. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. No solution is our answer. That means that it doesn't matter what we plug in here for that f and that f. There is no number, no fraction, no decimal, no nothing that will make this statement equal this statement. That will make this expression equal this expression. Okay, there is there's absolutely nothing that we could plug in here for f to make this true. Okay, so that is the special case of no solution. All right, so let's look at example six. After we look at example six, we're going to look at a couple more difficult problems as well, so we get as much practice as needed. All right, we have example six here, so we're going to follow our steps. So we have step one, distribute. All right, we need to distribute four times z there and four times five, uh, five there, four times z there and four times three here. Okay, so let's do that. Four times z, four z. I'm gonna put a little horizontal line in that z so we don't think it's a two. Four z, then four times five is plus 20. And then we still have this minus eight here. That equals, distribute here, four times z, four z. Four times three is plus 12. All right, that's done. Gather and combine. Okay, nothing to do here. We can combine 20 minus eight and that will simplify to 12, positive 12. That equals 4z plus 12. All right, you probably should be seeing something, a pattern here, okay? All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's continue. We need to now get variables on both sides. I'm going to choose to subtract 4z here, subtract 4z here. Okay, that strikes out, becomes 0. That strikes out and becomes 0. So I'm left with 12 equals 12. Okay, my variables canceled out, so I apply these rules. Is this true? Does 12 equal 12? Yes, it absolutely does. So, true means all real x. In this case, it would be all real z, right? Because our variable z, so our answer is, I can put all real numbers. This is also an, referred to as infinite solutions as well, either way. Okay, now notice, when, when we got to this statement right here, we had 4z plus 12 equals 4z plus 12. Well, that is absolutely equivalent. So we might already notice that this is going to end up being all real numbers, all, all real uh, z in this case, 
or infinite solution. So let's talk about what that means. That means that no matter what value of z we plug in there and there, this left side of the equation is going to equal the right side of the equation. No matter what value of z we plug in, the left side, the left expression is going to be equal to this right expression over here. Okay, that's what it means. All right, we're going to look at two more uh, examples and ones that gave students trouble, more trouble in class so that we can practice those. One with a lot of fractions and one with multiple steps of distributing required. Okay, so let's move on to those. All right, so let's look at this more complicated example, and we will see it's not bad because of the steps that I've taught you in using your calculator to help you do the work of fractions. Fractions are not scary. They really aren't, and we can. it's okay. We're in Algebra 1. We can use the calculator. Let's let it do the heavy lifting, and we just focus on the process. So here, that's exactly what we're going to do. This is number 8 from your assignment section for my students. Okay, so let's look for uh, any distribution. Do we have any distributing that we need to do? No, I don't see any distributing here, so that part is done. Combine and gather like terms? No, we don't need to do that. We have an x term, a constant term, an x term, and number term here, so we can't combine those in any way, so that part's done. Now we do need to get variables on one side and numbers on the other. Okay, so we need to look at this. We have 3 halves x and 7 thirds x. Well, which one of these fractions is bigger? Well, 2 will go into 3, uh, 1, and a little bit left over. 3 will go into 7, 2 and some left over. So this one is actually bigger. So I want to leave it alone. So that I can keep my variable terms positive, I'm going to leave it alone. So I'm going to get rid of this 3 over 2x over here and bring it over here. This means, right now, this means plus 3 over 2x. There's an implied plus right here. So the opposite of plus 3 over 2x, or adding 3 over 2x, is to subtract 3 over 2x. So I'm going to subtract 3 over 2x here. I'm going to subtract 3 over 2x here. Okay, so that strikes out, and I'm left with 1 half plus 1 half. So 1 half over here equals. All right, now 7 thirds minus 3 halves. We could do this. We could set a common denominator and set that all up, but let's just use our calculator. Okay, remember, in our calculator, we always put fractions in parentheses. So I have 7 thirds, parentheses, 7 over 3. That's what it means, 7 divided by 3, minus parentheses 3 halves. Okay, that's all I have here. So that's 0.83 repeating. So I'll just math, enter, enter, convert that to a fraction, and that leaves me with 5, 5, 6, x, plus 4. Okay, so that part's done. We already... Uh, established. Um, actually, we haven't done step three. Pardon me. We need to do that. Numbers are by themselves over here, so I need to get my other number term, my plus four, over there with it. So the opposite of plus four is minus four. So we're going to do that. That strikes out. I'm left with five six x, and that equals one half minus four. We could probably do that in our heads. It's going to be negative three and a half, but let's let our calculator do it for us. So we have parentheses, one half, fractions always, always go in parentheses in our calculator. One half minus four, that's a decimal, math, enter, enter, that's negative seven over two. Negative seven over two. Okay, now remember, when we have five, six x, that means essentially that we are multiplying x by five with this five, and then we are dividing that by 6. So we are multiplying by 5, dividing by 6. So we need to do the opposite of those two things. The fastest way to do that is to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal means the 6 comes on top, the 5 comes on bottom. That's the quick way to get rid of this. So we multiply by 6 fifths here, multiply by 6 fifths here. Okay, when we do that, that cancels here, and this cancels here. And then we're just left with 1x, which is what we want. So x equals. Now we've got fraction times fraction. That's pretty easy to do. 6 times negative 7, negative 42, over 5 times 2 is 10, right? Now, let's just let our calculator do it all for us and reduce this. Obviously, this is going to uh, reduce some, okay? So let's just do this step right here. 6 fifths, parentheses, 
6 over 5 times negative 7 over 2. That gives us a decimal. Math, enter, enter. Now we have a reduced fraction of negative 21 over 5. So negative, final answer, negative 21 over 5 equals x. Okay, no problem. We use our calculator, we let it do the heavy lifting of these fractions, and we focus on our algebraic process, and this problem is not a problem at all. All right, let's look at one more example. All right, this is the last one we're going to work. This is number 12 from the assignment section for my students. Okay, when we have multiple sets of distribution here, we have the these brackets here, these braces, and we also have parentheses. The best thing that we can do is to work from the inside out, okay? And that I'm going to show you what that means in a second. And we just take this one step at a time. We do not let this scare us. We just break this thing down one step at a time. And then it's really not bad at all. This side over here is going to be a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this some before we even start messing with all this over here. Because this is just two sets of distribution. That's all this is. We have a 2 times x here. We have a 2 times 11 there. We have a minus in front of this parentheses. So there is an implied negative 1 right there. There's an implied negative 1. So it's negative 1 times negative 4. Then it's negative 1 times x. Okay, we need to be careful with our signs. So that's going to this will then simplify to 2x plus 22. That's that part. And then we have negative 1 times negative 4 gives us plus 4. Negative 1 times positive x gives me negative x. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this further. I have distributed. Now I'm going to combine and gather my like terms over here. So I have 2x minus x. Okay, these two are going together. And then I have 22 plus 4. That's going to go together. So 2x minus x just gives me x. 22 plus 4 gives me plus 26. Okay? No problem. So this simplified down to x plus 26. This is much easier to work with. I took it one step at a time. I stayed organized with what I was doing. I took my time. I was meticulous about working with my signs. And it paid off because now this is much easier to work with. Okay. So I'm going to just leave this alone. And we're going to work with this left side now. Okay, when we have multiple sets of parentheses going on here, like we do here, we have these brackets and we have this inside parentheses. We work from the inside out. So we're going to work with everything inside these braces first to simplify before we start distributing this two in, just to make it easier to work with. Okay, so the first part of uh, the distributing that I need to do inside here is I have a negative 3 here times negative x. I have this negative 3 times this negative 5. So I'm going to do that. All right, I just write what, what is left, what doesn't change first. So I have 2, my brace still. I still have an x. And now this negative 3 times negative x is going to simplify to plus 3x. This negative 3 times this negative 5 becomes plus 15. And then I still have this plus 1 out here. And then I can add my brace and my equal sign here. Okay, so we've already handled the right side. We're just working on this one. All right, I have two choices here. I could go ahead and distribute this 2 everywhere, but that's going to be more complicated. So let's work with parentheses first. Okay, that's really following our order of operations is the best thing to do because parentheses comes first. So I'm going to combine and gather my like terms. So I can combine x plus 3x and I can combine 15 plus 1. All right, so I'm going to rewrite my 2 and my brace again. That's not changing. x plus 3x becomes 4x. 15 plus 1 becomes plus 16. Okay, now I can finally distribute this 2. Okay, just take it a step at a time. So 2 times 4x gives me 8x. 2 times 16 gives me plus 32. And this is not changing, so equals x plus 26. Okay, so after all of that, I have distributed everything, and I have combined my like terms on both sides. I handled, when these get complicated, just handle one side, get that figured out, and then handle the other side and get that figured out, and set them equal to one another. Don't, don't let this overwhelm you, overwhelm you just one step at a time, okay? So we have 
uh, we need to get variables on one side. So I have an 8x here and an x here. To keep my variable terms positive, I'm going to choose to subtract the x here and here. Okay, that strikes out. 8x minus x gives me 7x, and I have plus 32 left equals just 26 over here. Okay, I need to, I've got my numbers established by themselves over here. So we're almost done with step three. So we're going to subtract 32. So I'm going to strike that out and we get 7x equals. Okay, so 26 minus 32 is going to be a negative 6. All right, if I'm not sure, I'm not going to guess. Just use your calculator. 26 minus 32. Whoops. 32. There we go. Nothing wrong with this. Negative 6. Okay, now I have 7 times x. The opposite of that is to divide. So that gives me 1x, which is my goal. I'm going to write the answer over here. So x equals negative 6 divided by 7. Can't simplify that anymore. Final answer, negative 6 sevenths. Okay? So this isn't bad as long as you're very organized with what you're doing and you don't make a sign error, a silly sign error. Just take it one step at a time and simplify as you go and work with one side and then work with the other one. And that makes these problems very simple. It's just exactly what you have been doing. It's just a little more tedious. That's all. But as long as you're disciplined following your process, you will be just fine. All right. I will see you in the next video.